Well, here it is. It's ready to go for two nights, three nights. Actually, the setup doesn't change except for the amount of food. So I could get two more days, maybe three more days. I could technically use this easy five, five day hunt out of this 3,200 cubic inch Kuyu Icon Pro as it is. Not the, not the Ultra. This is the Pro. It has all the pockets inside. I'm gonna weigh it for you. This is everything. Everything that is gonna be on my back. Batteries to recharge the cell phone and my inReach, they're in the pack. So I'm gonna go through all the weights and how I got this down to under 27 pounds. Let's put it this way. When I started this, this style of hunting, it was right around 48 pounds. It was brutal. I just wanna repeat myself. This is everything. This isn't a base weight or this weight or that weight. This is everything from water to a 357 Magnum revolver. Scale, been using this for several years. Everything I can link to, I will link to in the description below. This is 27.06 pounds. What did I add in there? Must have added something because last time it was 26 point something. So some of the items in here are on the expensive side and I bought them used. This backpack, I bought used. Start on the outside, um, the Garmin inReach. Out in Colorado, Wyoming, everywhere out west. If you're in the mountains, it's a good chance you will not have cell phone service. So you can't check on your wife or your kids. You can't call for help. If you break your ankle, you can't do it, you're dead. This here links to my cell phone through Bluetooth and I have my full address. I can text message. I can send emails just like I was for my phone. It goes from here to the Garmin inReach, out to a satellite, from a satellite, back down to Garmin and then Garmin puts it out as an SMS. And it takes a little bit of time, but we can have fairly real-time conversations via text message. I do have a ton of gear, piles of gear that I've gotten rid of over the years. One of them is a standalone GPS. I use the Garmin EarthMate app that is free. You can use the GPS that's on your phone or you can link it via Bluetooth and use this, works really good. Another app is called Outly. A lot of people use OnX. I had the OnX chip for my standalone GPS. I don't have the whole bundle that you pay yearly, the subscription thing to get it on your cell phone. Uh, that may change. I might do that. Um, I don't need to. I'm not hunting that close to private land where I really need to know where I am exactly. In Wyoming, when we do our antelope hunts on BLM land, we really, really have to be sure where those borders are between BLM and private land so that we are on hunting private land. I've got one pouch. This houses my rangefinder. This is the only optic that I take hunting. Well, archery hunting. If I'm rifle hunting, I have a dang telescope on there. So I don't need a spotting scope. I don't need binoculars. I've got lots of binoculars. I have the best, most highly regarded bino harness, but I don't need it. It's a waste of weight. It's a waste of your joint life. And this here happens to be a 7X? Yes, yeah, a 7X. My binos are only eight. You can count the points on a bull elk hundreds of yards away with 7X. And the glass is pretty clear. This is a Vortec Razor HD 4000 7x25. This here clips right on. And if I need to range an animal, I pull it up, I range, and then I just set it down and it hangs. No worrying about putting back into pouches or anything like that. It's on my, my far right side, so it's completely out of the way when drawing a bow. This one here, probably a little controversial. It's made of titanium, so it's really, really lightweight. We're going to put it on the scale, fully loaded. Got multiple scales. For this weight, I'm going to just put it on this kitchen food scale. Two pounds, 6.4 ounces. Not bad for a big ass revolver. Two pounds, 6.4 ounces. It's a Taurus titanium tracker. High visibility front sight there. Could do a whole video on why you would take this. Mainly mountain lions, mountain lions. Especially where I'm hunting, there's a whole family of mountain lions. And in fact, one of the guys that I know hunts this area got in a stare down in the dark with the mother of these mountain lions in 2018. I think what I'm gonna do now is just let you watch me unpack everything and then I'll go through the individual components. This here, is a pretty cool new gadget that I got. Gotta set this aside so I don't lose that. Should I do 
Now, the the pro model of this backpack has these pouches. There's one, two, three, and four. So what I did, I have four onboard organizers. I used to have them all, all my little gadgets and whatnot in their own individual pouches that are, have different colors. So I knew what I was grabbing, what was in what, got rid of all those to save weight because it comes with enough pouches and pockets to keep things organized. That's it, it's completely empty. We're gonna put the empty backpack on the hanging scale so you can get an idea of what a Kuyu Icon Pro in the 3200 cubic inch backpack weighs. 4.75 pounds. That's really good. That's the reason that I bought this pack. Now, there is a major, major flaw with this backpack. I will tell you what that is at the end. And it's not just me. Everybody has this problem and I'm gonna try to remedy it. If not, I think I might, might be switching systems. Keep in mind, I have the 1800, the 3200, and a 7200 bag that all goes on the same frame. I'm gonna try to go over this in sections because there's a lot of stuff in this backpack. First thing up here are headlamps. Two headlamps, one set of backup batteries. Always start with fresh batteries in both. I believe this one takes two and this one takes three. The reason I don't just go with this one lightweight black diamond is you need a lot of light. You go back and uh, I'll link to it in the description and it'll pop out on a card or a, something or one of those things of my 2019 hunt. I was cutting and packing elk all night long till it basically dropped around 4, 4.30 in the morning and uh, had to take a nap. And you need light. Not You're not on a little trail, you're not hiking the Appalachian Trail and you can get away with just this tiny thing here. This light here is has a focusable beam. You can turn it into a flood. You can turn it down into a beam. It also has red and green little LEDs for inside your tent so you don't consume the battery. But you need a bright, bright light. Trust me, you want a bright light. Especially when you're going back to your meat where you got all your meat bags set up and you don't want to run into a bear or a mountain lion there. So that's the headlamps. I don't use the Havilon anymore. I've got a Havilon. I actually used it today. I had a crazy deep splinter and when I pulled it out, it broke off inside my finger. So I went to get the Havilon sliced it open, was able to pull it all out. I didn't want to wait for it to fester and get infected and have to like squeeze it out through the skin. I use the Havilon for processing meat once I get home. I want one good sturdy solid knife. This is a skinning knife. It can quarter, I get my back straps, I get my tenderloins. More importantly, it's strong and I can cut through uh, joints, the knee joint, the elbow joint, getting down into the pelvis when I'm getting the rear quarters off and I'm going around the ball socket inside the um, the whole pelvis. That Havilon, you can easily break a blade and you can't get in there and carve around and cut those ligaments and I think that's what's inside. Ligaments, tendons, you know the thing that's inside the your hip socket. We have ibuprofen. This is probably not enough. Earplugs to help you sleep. These ones here are antibacterial wipes. At the end of the day, you have to clean the sweat off of your areas that chafe. So that's your crotch. You gotta clean your crotch clean uh, or else your sweat will dry and that salt from your sweat will stick to your skin and you get that chafing. And it also helps the stink. These here are the wet wipes that I use for pooping. This section here, this is my limited first aid kit. I could go through this. It's got some tenacious tape. It's got steri strips. It's got band-aids. It's got big band-aids. I also have tape and gauze and some moleskin. I usually just get the tape and the gauze. In fact, um, the last hunt I was on, September 1st, 2019, I had completely quartered out the elk and I was getting in to the tenderloins. Somehow stuck this knife straight through my finger. Not that deep, but it was in there a good ways. And it was bleeding all over the place. So I used tape and gauze, wrapped it up. I'll link to that video where you can see 
This here is a repair kit for my inflatable sleeping pad. Obviously, these are the tent stake. This here, minimal. A lot of guys go overboard. They cannot, they need their electronics. This is only 4,000 milliamps. When I put my cell phone on airplane mode, I can have it on all day and it only use 50% of the battery. My Garmin inReach, I don't have to worry about charging that at all. That'll last at least seven days. And you can change the setting on how many times it sends out like a ping of what your location is to extend the battery life of your inReach. This here will keep my phone going for several days. I am not a elk caller, but if I need to, stop one, you shoot a bull, and you just want it to slow down. Every second you can keep that animal close to you and bleed out close to you mean the difference of getting your animal or not. So, there you go, after he's arrowed. Windicator, this is also some anti-chafe action here if you need to. Well, this is basic food for two days. What you don't see here and what is not included in that weight of 27.11 pounds is snacks. That's really the big difference in all of this and what you can get is how much food you need. These are dinners and they are big, big dinners. I can never finish them. Uh, I do not recommend biscuit and gravy. I don't know why I bought so many of them. Didn't taste all that great. 610 calories for breakfast. And this one is only 440 calories for dinner. So that's about a thousand calories. You got to come up with at least another 1500 calories. And I do that with Fritos and peanut butter and bagels and things like that. Water, get into my water filtration. Uh, you have to be able to process and filter water. You cannot bring all your water with you. This two liters is about enough for one day. Maybe not even that. You will drink this, especially early September. Kind of proud of this. I have had great success with this little cook system here. Again, links will be in the description. This is a, a full, full kit here. Got the lighter got the the canister the fuel canister it's got your titanium pot everything fits in there yeah 750 milliliters um the the levels are marked on the inside fill it up and you can see what you need there most all these backpacking meals take 500 milliliters this here there is a ton of them on the market now that are cheaper than this this is an msr i don't even remember what it's called does it have it down here dragonfly now that might have been the old school boils water two minutes See how, how fast that gets going. You might be able to launch a hot air balloon with this dang thing. This platypus is the lightest way to carry water, especially two liters of water. I used to use a camelback and it is ridiculously heavy. Some people would use two smart water bottles to get their two liters, but this is a you probably get three liters into this dang thing. Next, I'm gonna tell you how I filter this and how I got to that stage. Wanted to mention something real quick. This is how I carry my big camcorder on my on the, the strap of the backpack. This is included in that 27.11 pounds. So you take this out and you're under 27 pounds. So this is it. The lightest weight, close to the lightest weight, water filter system you can get. How you would reduce that is you would go to a Sawyer Mini. The reason I don't like the Sawyer Mini is it is very, very slow. And new is this little coupler here. This here will screw right onto here. It's like this. Take your dirty water, screws right on like that, and you can squeeze one liter of dirty water and make one liter of clean water. Real lightweight, no hoses. You can still set this up as a gravity system if you want. There's a little poke out hole right here. You can put a little carabiner, a little loop of paracord. The flow rate is so good that you don't need to do a gravity system. Now I do have a gravity system. I've got a really nice one that'll do a lot of water. I use that when I hunt with other people and we're gonna be filtering a lot of water. So this is the sleep system. There's a few things that could change on here. One thing, and that could be this drop cloth. This is the drop cloth that goes with this tent and it is quite heavy. Just how heavy is this drop cloth? Let's see if we can get all this on here. 6.6 .6 ounces, just under a half a pound. So the tent, hopefully if I put enough work into this, you can see the B-roll footage of the tent. This is an SL2 REI tent. Not to be confused with a quarter dome tent or any of the other tents. The SL stands for super light and it is super light. It's under three pounds. I don't pack it into the bag. Get rid of the bag. It makes it easier 
to place these items separately inside the backpack. This here is my inflatable pillow. Trekology. Again, links in the description. This comes with a little stuff sack, little little carrying pouch. I don't bring that either. This here, it's a Nemo. Tensor insulated sleeping pad. Called the 20R. This is several years old. It's got insulation in here. Permaloft insulation in this. Uh, this is a really good sleeping pad. I'm 6'1", and I just used the regular. So I didn't want the weight of a long or a wide or a extra large or anything like that. The sleeping bag. I've gone through a lot of sleeping bags. I've gone through synthetic sleeping bags. I've gone through down sleeping bags. This one here is a very, very unique sleeping bag. First glance, this might look like a mummy bag, but it's different. This is a Big Agnes Blackburn UL zero degree bag. It's 850 fill power. That's pretty much as good as you can get as far as fill power. The loft on this is crazy. There's a whole bunch of technical details about how down works and what fill power means. And basically the higher the fill power, the better the insulation and the lighter the weight. All of the down is on the top. The back side of this has nothing in it except a pocket for your sleeping pad to go in. So it's kind of like a quilt. It doesn't suck as bad as a quilt. It's got the pocket. It has a down hood already in it. Is it my, my, my hands inside of it? And you can see there's no down on the back. You get your insulation from your sleeping pad. The reason it makes no sense to put down on the back of the sleeping bag is because when you squish it all down, it doesn't insulate. That's it. You can also get cold spots. If you are, you're a side sleeper and you have your butt pressed against one side, you can get a cold ass because that down is squished and there's no insulation around your butt. I've tested it all since January down to the lowest was 18 degrees and 18 degrees I, it was pretty chilly i mean i had to bundle up inside there you just don't know what kind of weather you're going to get into at overnight lows in 2018 i had a 15 degree down big agnes bag i think it was only like 650 fill power somehow the where we camped in this bottom of this valley next to a stream or close to a stream it was so cold and there was so much humidity in there. You got to the dew point and I was cold. I had everything that I brought on. This here has worked out good. Kind of that extra 15 degrees. And, I, and because all that down, the weight of the fill is on top of you instead of split between the top and the bottom of you. When it's on the bottom, it doesn't do anything when it's squished. So what clothes do I bring that I don't wear? Not very many. I've got one standard beanie to put over my head it's when I'm sleeping. I've got one Kuyu Long Johns. They don't go all the way down. They go down to like your shin and they're meant to be that way. They're meant to be shorter uh, because they assume that you're gonna have some merino wool socks to kind of go up halfway up your leg. It's, it's all about lightweight. That's why these things even exist. Uh, they can completely come off of you without taking all your clothes off. They've got basically stripper pants, uh, Velcro up here, and zips all the way down the legs. I don't bring extra underwear. I don't bring extra socks. Never had an issue with socks. I, I guess my feet don't sweat very much. Um, you can take your socks off at night you can dry them out. You can wash them in a stream. Just unnecessary volume and weight. Because if I push that bag too much more, I'm gonna run out of room. I'm gonna have to get a larger backpack and that increases more weight. With everything loaded in that backpack, I had a enough room for snacks and maybe two more mountain houses. I got a new rain jacket and it's a it's a frog frog togs. I have a really nice outdoor research helium but uh, I'll tell you why here in just a second why I switched to this frog togs. This here this is basically a, another sleeping bag a upper body sleeping bag. This is a down puffy jacket. It's more of a down puffy coat. It's um, our Turex. I used to know what the fill power was, but it's a, it's a high quality down, goose down. This here will keep you warm in the winter time with just a t-shirt on. This here will definitely like save your life if it gets somehow that cold. That leads me to the reason why I got the extra large frog togs. It does weigh more than the outdoor research one. Doesn't compress the down of the puffy jacket, the down coat here. On the last trip, we had this thunderstorm come in and we had to get off of the high ridge line because there was a lot of 
uh, you know, ground striking lightning bolts. And we were like, we got to get out of here. We got to get down. So I threw this on and I had my old, my old rain jacket, which is only a size large. And it was like really constricting. I could tell that I was like ready to burst at the seams. So this extra large one, you wouldn't wear it, uh, you know, out and about around town or to the park because it looks too big. Got the other one for that. But when you put this puffy underneath here, the perfect system to stay very warm. Now, all that talking made me thirsty. There's no way that I can keep this video down to 10 minutes, but I'm going to try to keep it as short and as sweet and to the point as possible. Bet you thought I forgot, didn't you? What's wrong with this dang Kuyu backpack? It sounds like you're riding a horse. This is the loudest backpack you'll ever find. It literally sounds like a leather saddle on a horse. I'm gonna have to take it apart and basically use athletic tape. That'll be a whole video in itself on how to make your Kuyu backpack not squeak like a leather saddle. But yeah, that is the biggest downfall of this Kuyu backpack is it's loud as hell and annoying. So one thing you don't see here is a bear bag or a food bag that I keep all my food in or a paracord and a rock bag to throw it up over a tree. Kind of got away from doing that. Is it a little bit risky? Uh, we're only in black bear country. If you've run into a black bear outside of a campground or outside of a uh, residential area in the mountains, you know that they run as fast as they can away from you. And I always have a black bear tag. So if a black bear wants to come to tent, probably should keep that part out, yeah. I do have that system and uh, have used it, but we found that we don't need it, pretty much because of where we hunt. This is not my first try on this. I've got thousands of dollars wrapped up into other gear that um, probably performed good, but just didn't perform good enough to justify its weight and back pain and knee pain. Under 27 pounds. Please comment below, ask questions video requests. 